Okay, step number two of our fish project, we are making a pattern for the background. So we're gonna have that pattern be strictly black and white, and we get to decide what lines and shapes we're going to use. Now a pattern, again, is something that repeats. So if I start with a zigzag and then do a swirly line and then um, circles and then I do triangles and rectangles, that's not really making a pattern. That's putting a lot of stuff on my page, but I'm not making a pattern. So what I need to do is think of maybe my favorite kind of line and go from that, start from there, and then I can add things in if I want to. I'm gonna start right away with Sharpie just to save myself some time. <clears throat> so I'm gonna start with just a simple line. And I'm gonna start with a line, maybe something like this. Now I have to repeat that line. I'm gonna move over and repeat. Okay, so there's my repeated pattern. Okay, it looks fine, but it could look a lot better. What I'm gonna do now is maybe think of another line that I can put inside of these or next to those lines that I already drew to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, I even added it to the edge here so it continued all the way off. I still think I can do more with this. Maybe make some parts a little bit darker. So maybe I'll make some of my lines wider. Uh, maybe I'll add in some shapes, but whatever I add in, I need to repeat it throughout the entire page. Okay, so now I finished with my pattern on here. I went through and I just made some parts a little bit wider and it really has a nice effect to it. It didn't take me that much longer to do. And remember, good art takes time. So if I put some effort into it, I'm really gonna come up with something that I'm really proud of and that I really enjoy making. So now I'm going to start putting these two things together. So I have my black and white patterned paper and I have my colored fish. So now I'm gonna take my scissors. Please remember, you're holding your scissors the correct way. You have the little uh, circle for your thumb, the big circle for your fingers. You're always pointing your scissors away from you. And here we go. Opening those up. Whoops, I got too many fingers in there. Use this hand that's holding the paper to move the paper. Try not to move your scissors too much. And you might just get all tangled up. When I'm cutting too, remember to leave a little bit of that white space because if I cut on the line, I, oh, 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 oh. I might actually cut parts of my project off. And I don't want that to happen. So now I'm going to move that paper going in, coming back. This is a slow process. Please take your time. There is no rush. Now the other way too, you'll notice I kind of got a little close to that fin there. The other way you can do it is by taking your scissors out and cutting in and then go that way. So I'm gonna bring my scissors in, take my scissors out and go back this way. If you have something that's a little bit trickier, try doing that if you're afraid of maybe some of your parts falling off or if you accidentally cut off part of your part.
All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna put my scraps in the recycling, keep clean before I move on to the next step. And I'm gonna need some glue. So here I go, I have my fish and I get to glue it down to this patterned paper that I made. So I'm gonna turn my fish over, turn my glue bottle over. Oops, first of all, I have to make sure it's open and make sure that you can see that little space there. If you can't, give it a, tw uh, a twist. Make sure you can hear it breathing and then turn it upside down. Give it a minute. It might not be full. It might not come out right away. Take your time, no rush. And I'm just gonna put dots going around the edge of my fish, little dots, not giant dots. If they're giant, leave more space in between them. Okay, there we go. It's around the edge of my fish. I'm gonna take my fish very carefully, turn it over, and place it on my paper. This is where you get to give it the massage, remember? Just a little bit. If glue is oozing out, um, wipe it off with your fingers just a little bit gently with your fingers and then rub your fingers together so that you can get rid of that extra glue that's on there all right this with your name on the back and your teacher's name so whoever your teacher is your classroom teacher put your teacher's name on there this if you're in the art room will go on the drying rack if you're in your classroom, put it off to the side somewhere so it can give it a chance to dry. If we start stacking them up on top of each other and they have fresh glue on them, we're gonna have ourselves a fish sandwich. So we don't want that. We want separate pieces of art. Make sure they dry properly before we stack them up. All right, you guys, good job.